Hey everybody, what's going on? Baru here, and today I have another skill tree breakdown. You guys have been heavily requesting uh, more of these since I did the Claptrap one, and I want to thank you guys for all of the support that you have been showing this type of uh, sort of series. I really do like taking my time and breaking down each skill tree uh, for each of the classes. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Fan the Hammer uh, skill tree for Nisha, and we get pretty much uh, all the skill tree here except for the... Uh, the bottom left tier, but it's it's whatever. We get to see everything else, so it'll give you a good idea of what to expect from the skill tree. And the skill tree is mostly centered around the action skill itself, uh, basically being up close and personal with your enemy, uh, stealing ammunition, keeping your action skill up, and is more of a I guess you could say Gunzerker style uh, action tr or, uh, skill tree for this uh, action skill. So anyway, why don't we go ahead and just start going over the first two, uh, the first two skill trees in the first tier, and the first one's going to be a kill skill called Saddle Up. Killing an enemy grants you increased movement speed and gun damage for a short amount of time, and if we can see here, it's four percent and five percent gun damage for each level that you put in. So five out of five, you're going to look at you know about twenty-five percent gun damage, which is not that bad. Uh, it is a kill skill, and as we've seen. Uh, you'll definitely be able to go through a lot of, you know, smaller enemies. You don't have to really worry uh, too much about kill skills not, like, being a thing. That's one thing that uh, this the pre-sequel has really been focusing on, is that cannon fodder is a good thing. So you'll be mowing through a lot of enemies very quickly. So, uh, And with the other skill on the other side here that we'll take a look at here shortly, you're going to have this kill skill up a lot because you're going to want to focus... Uh, on just rapidly killing enemies. In fact, this entire tree is mostly focused on movement speed and uh, rapidly killing enemies. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at that other side of the skill tree here and see what we have. And now for the other tier 1 skill, we've got the Ruthless, which is another kill skill type ability, although it's not really a skill. Uh, so kills made during showdown will extend the duration of showdown, which uh, has a lot of synergy with a skill that you're going to see later down this uh, tree here. That's going to lead to some massive damage increase, assuming you can mow through enemies. So uh, this works pretty much exactly like Salvador's yippee ki uh, ability for those who are familiar with Salvador. And every time you get a kill, you're going to increase your duration. Although there doesn't seem to be anything that's like... Uh, you know, you can cool the you can cool it down while actually using your action skill, so it won't be exactly like Salvador, but it's a good skill nonetheless. Being able to stay in your showdown because you already have a bunch of bonuses. You've got that fire rate, the aim assist, and all sorts of other type of skills. So ruthless is going to be something that you're going to want to pick up regardless of what, uh, regardless of what skill tree you go down. You're probably going to want to pick up ruthless just because of the uh, getting a kill will extend the duration. And if we take a look, you can see that the class mod, uh, the legendary class mod that Nisha is currently using, uh, does in fact boost this skill, so we can probably expect a class mod with plus six uh, for boosting this particular skill, so uh, we can expect a little bit more, uh, maybe, maybe a couple builds centered around staying inside the action skill for as long as possible. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump down to the next tier of skills here. So keeping with the Salvador trend, we have yet another skill that's sort of similar, which is Bottled Courage. When Showdown begins, when, meaning when you first activate it, uh, you get a portion of your shield restored, similar how Salvador had a portion of his health restored, and while it is cooling down, you will get increased shield recharge rate and in, uh, reduced recharge delay, which is a good thing. So a little bit of extra survivability, and you can kind of guarantee that maybe uh, maybe you won't immediately go down as soon as you hit your action skill, which is sometimes a problem that Salvador kind of had because health doesn't seem to really uh, instantly go through. It kind of uh, takes a second or two. So hopefully the shield will be a little bit more instant from the gameplay that we saw. The using the action skill sort of instantly gave you that shield. You don't have to really wait for it. And again, uh, this is another skill that is being boosted, so we can expect a potential 6 out of 5 class mod uh, for this skill specifically. So uh, if you're looking for more survivable 
uh, more survivable build. We can possibly put skill points into this because the action skill recharge is not actually that long to. Uh, if you're running a turtle shield, you could potentially make a build around using a turtle shield, constantly hitting your showdown and restoring large portions of your shield. Whenever it's cooled down, uh, you can just hit hide behind some cover for just a little bit and have some pretty good recharge delay as well as some recharge rate. So overall, pretty good survivability skill. Uh, let's go ahead and take over to the other side here, and we're going to look at a very special skill that we're all going to love. It's Money Shot. Kind of. So, for this next skill, we have Magnificent Six. The last six bullets in non-elemental clips deal extra damage, which basically means that every single Jacob's weapon in the game now has built-in Money Shot. However, the way that this is worded, gun damage, it's not going to be the same as Money Shot. For those who don't know, Money Shot was multiplicative because it just boosted straight damage and did not specify gun damage. If it specifies gun damage almost every single time, it is going to be additive rather than multiplicative. It also, uh, we also don't know if the math on this is actually correct because the Gunzerker, it goes up to 880 uh, on the Gunzerker when in reality it went up to 1056. So hopefully that means that this will be correct and maybe we'll be able to do math correctly. Who knows? But either way, uh, this is good for basically Jacob's weapons because Jacob's weapons were kind of hurting uh, for extra damage and this also makes quads extremely strong. Uh, one thing that I really liked about this is that uh, it doesn't need a minimum magazine in order to get the full damage out of it. Just being able to have uh, extra damage uh, just, just because of the last six bullets is really nice and will have more synergy with a lot more guns. In addition, this is going to have really good synergy with, this, with the uh, ability called Pickpocket, which we'll take a look at later down the tree here. But basically, uh, it's going to really synergize with the fact that you're going to be using the last six bullets. And you're going to want to not actually reload your gun. That's right. Uh, Nisha is going to basically, you're never going to want to actually do a full reload. And she's going to be able to do really well with Jacob's quads and Jacob's pistols. And I like how it says non-elemental weapons, which means you're not going to be able to do this with weapons such as the Herald or most, I think most laser guns. I think... I don't think I saw any non-elemental laser guns, or maybe just because they haven't shown them off. I'm unsure of that. Uh, there may be non-elemental lasers. We don't know yet. But this is a very good buff for Jacob Weaponry and very good synergy with quads. And we'll talk about the pickpocket skill later. But until then, let's go ahead and start uh, making our way down this tree again. So now we have our very first uh, game changer skill which is called Short Fuse. This is a kill skill. After killing an enemy, all your shots deal bonus explosive damage for a short time. The closer the enemy is to you, the higher the damage. So we were just talking about Jacob's quads having more synergy. Now you're going to have a reason to want to be up close and personal. When you have this skill and you have the kill skill active, you will deal up to 35% extra weapon damage as explosive. So, yeah, now you're going to be able to have an explosive Jacob's Quad just because. And you're going to be able to constantly be refilling it, dealing explosive damage, uh, doing more damage overall, which is really nice. I don't know if there's any sort of uh, synergy with explosive damage in that one skill that we can't see. But, you know, extra damage is good nonetheless. And plus, you can throw on a... Uh, explosive damage relic that way you can actually boost the damage of uh, Jacob's weaponry without actually having to use sort of a Jacob's relic which is gonna be kinda nice so anyway uh, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for short fused now let's take a look at the skill pickpocket which we were talking about earlier so here it is pickpocket now this skill your melee attack steals up to six bullets from your enemy and you instantly load them into your current guns magazine there is a cooldown for the skill does not work with rocket launcher ammo and yeah so this is the skill that i was talking about you're going to want to be up close and personal and will have a lot of synergy with quads so a typical quad will have about 
uh, about five ammo in it, so that'll allow for two shots. Now, instead of doing a reload animation, what you're going to be able to do is that you can instead melee attack a nearby enemy, and this will bypass your reload animation and allow you to attack again instantly without having to worry about actually uh, reloading your gun. And because it can steal up to six ammo instead of, let's say, you know, two or three, you'll be able to get potentially an additional two shots. And this will work for pretty much any quad in general. I'm just saying Jacobs because of the non-elemental uh, magnificent, uh, magnificent, magnificent six uh, skill. So you're always on the last six bullets of your of your shotgun. So, I'm not entirely sure what the cooldown of this is. From what I saw in the gameplay, it's about 5 seconds or so, which is not too terribly bad, so you'll probably end up skipping every other reload uh, animation. Or, you know, if you're on PC, you may be able to drop reload. However, we, ne we don't actually know if uh, drop reloading is going to be a function in uh, the pre-sequel, whether or not that keybinding is actually going to be available. But considering it was in the PC version of Borderlands 1 and 2, I would assume it's still going to be there. But even without drop reloading, uh, Pickpocket is going to be an amazing skill because of the dual wielding function. You will be able to fill up both of the guns, uh, your, both your left and right hand from what we saw in the gameplay, which is really nice. That way you don't have to reload two guns. You know, you empty both the magazines. Instead of doing a reload animation, just hit them once. There you go. Continue firing. So, overall, really good skill. Definitely uh, synergizes with that up-close and personal type uh, type skills. And this is kind of this is kind of turning into the Gunzerker that we wanted rather than the Gunzerker that we got. The Gunzerker leaves a lot to be desired in Borderlands 2. He just felt very, now I have two gun and all of my skills just make my gun better. But this doesn't really make the character better. It doesn't really feel like the character is going anywhere with those skills. It's just, it's now slightly better. It gets a little bit more reload speed. It's a little bit more magazine size. Those type of things. That doesn't really feel like character progression to me. But in this skill tree, we can really feel like Nisha is becoming better the more you spec into it. And it's not just, hey, I have two gun. This is gun. This is very, this, this whole skill tree, this is gun. This is very gun skill tree. But anyway, enough talking about that. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the cute little bunny rabbit and see what that gives us for skills. So here we have faster, faster and you kill skill. Killing, uh, killing an enemy greatly improves your reload speed, weapon swap speed, and your fire rate for a short duration. As we can see, it's about 7% per skill that you uh, throw into that. So 35% for everything. And we can assume that a skill like this will have uh, will, will, will have a potentially a plus six comm. So we can maybe bring that to 77% with 11 out of five, if that's even possible. Which, if that's true, just imagine, you know, 77% rate of fire increase and 77% reload speed. That's just going to be awesome and ridiculous. So... Faster than you, definitely a good skill to pick up. Not really, uh, not really special in any way. I wouldn't. I don't really see the the need for weapon swap outside of maybe going to a rocket launcher to kill a big enemy. But uh, you typically lose your kill skills if you go down, so that weapon swap speed will be lost anyway. If you uh, want to use a rocket launcher uh, for getting a second wind or anything like that, so uh, it, overall. Good DPS increase if you have extra points to throw elsewhere. However, we're, we're probably going to want to focus more on the right side here rather than the left side of this little tree here because on the right side, we have two bonuses that you're really going to love. So let's just go ahead and jump back over and take a look at what these are. So to start off, we've got Gunslinger, which is when showdown begins and ends, a portion of your gun is instantly reloaded. So again, another Salvador-inspired skill uh, for Salvador, when he guns her, he instantly reloaded uh, his left and right gun. So now you're going to have Showdown, which is just going to instantly uh, reload whatever you're going to be using, but up to a certain mag size. 
Uh, so it looks like the more points you put into it, the more ammo that is going to be added to the magazine. Again, this is another standard type of skill, so we can imagine 11 out of 5, so up to 11 ammo, could potentially be added before and after showdown. Which is kind of nice because you can sometimes uh, be on the brink of death. You want to hit your showdown skill, but your gun just isn't reloaded yet. So that can be kind of an issue, and this, and this skill kind of solves that. It will allow you to go into gunslinger mode. Uh, get, shoot off the last bit of your magazine, which, by the way, if you actually only reload uh, up to six ammunition, you're going to be triggering Magnificent Six again. So you're going to have increased damage for those first, or rather, for those last six shot, five to six shots that you may be uh, adding to your magazine. So I like how they kind of. Uh, it feels like the skill is just like, oh, it's only six. But if you look at the other skills that are being added in, it's it's really synergy with previous skills that you've already specced into, which is really nice. Again, we're going to go back to Salvador. Nothing really synergized with anything outside of... In fact, a lot of the skills sort of conflicted with each other. Uh, you've got the main. You've got a skill that uh, gives you increased damage when Gunzerk is on cooldown, and then you've got a skill tree where you never actually go on cooldown. So again, that whole contradictory uh, skill tree that Salvador had just isn't here. We feel a lot more synergy and a lot more balance. You know what? If you've made it this far into the commentary, throw in the, this is the Salvador we should have had. Because that's how I really feel about Nisha. I'm not going to lie. I had a little bit of an issue getting into her action skill. But the more I look at the skill tree and the more I look about the potential of what they've of what could happen and how they've changed previous classes and learned from their mistakes. I'm really looking forward to playing Nisha just as much as I was looking forward to playing Clap uh, after looking through his skills in these skill tree breakdowns. But anyway, let's go ahead and continue on with this skill tree here. And this is going to have synergy again with the first tier that we specced in at the very start. And so for this next skill, we have a skill called High Noon you gain bonus gun damage for the longer that you're in uh, showdown. And for this, you gain about 1% gun damage per second per skill point that you are inside of uh, showdown. And this is another skill that is being boosted by a class mod, so we can assume this could potentially go up to, uh, let's say, 11 gun damage per second. And you gain... Uh, you can also gain one second for killing an enemy. So every time you kill an enemy, you're pretty much guaranteeing that the next enemy that you're going to kill is going to be is going to have an additional 11% gun damage going into that kill, which is really nice. Uh, this is this this is another instance of synergy between skills. So rather than rather than Salvador, which was just kill and potentially last longer. Now you'll have kill, do more damage, be able to kill faster, kill for longer, be able to kill even faster. I'm actually kind of curious how high in gun damage you could get this skill going, because this looks like that it could get uh, pretty ridiculous very quickly. And if there are skill, or uh, not really skills, if there are say minions in boss fights or raid boss fights, Nisha may become a an absolute powerhouse just because she can keep. Uh, her action skill going for a long period of time and this is going to be really devastating if they do end up allowing for uh, smaller mobs during boss fights you know let's take for example the racks during the warrior fight it would be extremely easy to go into the warrior fight activate your action skill and just start killing rack for you know about 40 seconds or so and there you go. If you've got, you know, 11, if you've got 11 skill points in there, gaining 11% gun damage for those 40 seconds, and you're looking at about, you know, 440% gun damage going into the warrior fight, which is going to kill him in a matter of seconds, which is great and awesome. Like, I mean, I, w I was going to say broken, but all of the characters seem to be broken and... You know this trend is keeping is keeping on the more we do these skill tree breakdowns so that is a skill that i'm looking forward to being able to slaughter smaller enemies and it also looks like the enemy density is rather large in the pre-sequel which is also a good thing so you won't have to worry about going through just 
empty corridors with no enemies and losing your action skill. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the capstone, shall we? So now for our capstone, we have one for each of you. When using a pistol, note only pistols, you get an exact copy of that gun in your offhand while using iron sights to shoot with your main hand only. So this is a good thing. This shows that Gearbox does not want to see, uh, Gearbox does not want to see any sort of Salvador being uh, at, or returning in the pre-sequel. They've learned from their mistakes. They no longer want to see, you know, Harold in one hand and Grog Nozzle duct taped to the other hand. They also want to have a little, they want it to only be pistols. That way you're not dual wielding rocket launchers, dual wielding, uh, you know, Flacker Ahab or, you know, any combination like that. It will, it will lead to a lot less of uh, just like borderline breaking the game and they won't, and maybe Gearbox won't try and balance the game around those game breaking glitches because, well, they won't even exist in the first place. Which is kind of nice, which means we'll have a much more enjoyable experience for everybody rather than for them to try and balance around the obscenely broken Salvador. Now, I will say this skill is kind of generic. There's not really much to say about it. You get two guns, but only when you're using pistols. So you're, if, there is, if there ends up being a Moxie-based pistol, you will be able to dual wield it. However, you will only be able to dual wield two of the Moxie pistols. You're not going to be able to go Harold, Harold, Ruby, or anything like that. You can. Uh, there was, I think we saw it in the gameplay, Harold, Harold. Uh, I might be mistaken on seeing that, but it is a pistol, so it would work for that. Uh, you would be able to go Harold, Harold, but you wouldn't get that bonus from Magnificent, uh, Magnificent Six. So that is a little unfortunate. But overall, not a bad skill extra dps you really won't even you really don't even need this skill you can't potentially go all the way down here and get the showdown skill without actually having to pick up one for each of you which is you know kind of uh kind of interesting that a skill tree you can actually work without its capstone like imagine trying to play krieg without release the beast or you know specking all the way down to stv and never actually picking up release the beast so, you know, you're not going to be able, you're not going to have to pick this skill up. Once you get the one that gives you gun damage the longer you're in showdown, you can start going right back down, say, uh, the Rifle Woman or maybe the Law and Order Tree, which we will be taking a look at uh, later this week. Let me know in the comment section below which skill tree you would like me to do these in depth walk, uh, breakdowns of. Would you like to see the Law and Order Tree next, or would you like to see the Rifle Woman Tree next? You guys let me know in the comment section below. So that is pretty much going to wrap everything up for the Nisha uh, Fan the Hammer skill tree breakdown. As always, guys, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. If you found this video informative or helpful in any way, be sure to hit the like button. Help support me in what I do. And keep it here for more Borderlands pre-sequel skill tree breakdowns, guides, and otherwise news. So that's pretty much it. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Later.